Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. What next for Russian heavyweight Aslan Bekmakhmadov, now 13-0 following a win over Erkin Tepe? And it's a serious question. What are they going to do with Makhmadov? How are they going to move him? Because he needs to be in fights where he can get something out of it, that he can get some rounds, some experience, not just uh, basically beating up faded heavyweights that um, basically, like Tepper, give up after a round. I mean, if you look at his record, the most recent fights since the end of 2019, you've had the ghost of Samuel Peter, Dylan Carmen, Pavel Sauer and Erkin Tepper. None of them went past a round. So collectively, he's had about two and a half, three rounds of action out of those four fights in the past almost two years. So in what situation and what world is that going to do him any benefit? Sure, he's building a record, but he's building it too slowly. He's not fighting often enough. And let's face it, he's already 32 years old and he definitely fits into the who needs him camp. So there's some questions about what next for Aslan Bekmakhmadov because the Golden Boy door closed uh, earlier this year. They he, they were going to co-promote him, but then the deal just fell apart. Never happened. So we'll quickly talk about the Tepper fight and then on to the potential what next. But in terms of this fight, I was hoping at least... You know, Tepper, having been an experienced heavyweight, it had some decent wins in his prime. Obviously, he'd sort of uh, fallen to a, a, a head scandal a few years ago, and he hasn't really looked the same since. And i got to say, it sort of seems to be that Robert Hellenius, who brutally knocked him out about three years ago, seems to have taken the last vestiges of um, Erkin Tepper and what was left of him, because we didn't really see much in this fight. And there were red flags the day before the fight because of the weigh-in where Tepper showed up, took his top off and was 264 pounds on the scale. And generally he's a guy that's been fighting in the 240s. He looked fleshy, he looked out of shape, he looked like he just rolled off the sofa. He looked like he was well outgunned for this fight. And we knew that this was going to be a case that Makhmadov was a heavy hot favourite. But what was Tepper going to be able to do? Because some of what bringing him in for was to probably give him some experience experience some rounds not just a little bit of name recognition I'm sure that his uh, management I have the Tiger management were hoping for more from Erkin Tepper to give Arslan Bek Makhmadov but the 39 year old Tepper yeah it wasn't great there were three knockdowns in that opening round the first and I, I guess I would say because it seemed to be Makhmadov looked like he was ready to box with Tepper to begin with, that he wanted to have a look, um, use his boxing, because he didn't just relentlessly come forward, as we've seen in some recent fights, like against Pavel Sauer, where he just walked through him. First minute, just over a minute, uh, Makhmadov was actually trying to box with Tepper and having a look. But about halfway through the round, he started to just throw in clubbing sh shots, right hands, left hook, and Tepper goes down. The second knockdown was quite funny because it was like a bull and matador situation. Tepper, who was already obviously hurt and looking to just sort of uh, throw and wing in some shots, was tracking forward, and Makhmadov just shifted his body. Tepper found here and then found the canvas and he was given a count. So it probably shouldn't have been ruled a knockdown because to me it didn't look like one. And um, after that, Makhmadov just basically throwing in clubbing shots and Tepe goes down the third time. After that end, end of that first round, he comes back to the corner and he basically says he doesn't want it. His corner doesn't want it. It's waved off. So it was a disappointing ending to a disappointing fight that I had higher expectations for. Because Makhmadov needs rounds. He needs experience. I mean, let's face it, most of the guys since Johnny Rice in 2019, and that was middle of that year, haven't given him much work, haven't been able to do much for him. Throw in the pandemic inactivity. It really has been a case of uh, hurry up, wait and not do too much and not really sort of advance his own cause in the heavyweight division. You could have said after the Johnny Rice fight two years ago when he was 30 years old that he was poised to step on to something a bit bigger and better. But instead, what we've had is, you know, a procession of guys that just can't take a shot. And generally, it's because 
they're you know past prime way past prime samuel peter he was uh, the ghost of samuel peter and clearly we just watched the ghost of er erkin tapper dylan carman was knocked out in about 10 seconds and parvel sow at 33 seconds they got to be putting their hand in their pocket and getting this guy someone to face that can go some rounds that can actually you know give him a test I mean, I wouldn't mind a Johnny Rice rematch, but maybe that's a bit out of their league in terms of um, what they'd be willing to spend for an opponent right now, given that Johnny Rice has uh, had a bit of a resurgence in his career, stopping uh, the vaunted Michael Polite coffee uh, just a few months ago. But it is a serious question. If he's not fighting in the United Kingdom or the United States with a big promoter and they're not spending to get the relevant sort of step-ups, where is Makhmadov going? It sort of seems to be that we're seeing his prime wasting and whiling away as he just doesn't isn't up to much. And that's really disappointing. So I do hope that we see him again soon because I would hope that for the rest of 2020, what we're at the end of September now, get him out again. Make sure that he doesn't end this 2021 just with two rounds of action against two guys, uh, Erkin Tepe and Pavel Sauer, that weren't up to much. He needs to be more active as a guy who's trying to build his profile, build his name, build his record and resume. And hopefully he can build that record and resume against a couple of guys that have got a pulse because he needs to be fighting those guys. And based from box rec, he's regarded as the number 28 heavyweight in the world. And at this point, I mean, maybe you could actually say in reality, because he's taken points against guys who used to have some wins of note, Samuel Peter, Erkin Tepper, etc. I think that um, Makhmadov needs to be fighting more live bodies. He's not going to break through and go get anywhere if he can't actually have some meaningful fights, some stepping stone fights of note to put himself in better position. The ranking and sanctioning bodies are only going to go so far to accommodate you know, this guy. Let's face it. If he's not connected with money, a big promoter, etc., it's probably going to be quite hard to put him into a position where he can get eliminators, final eliminators, and become a mandatory. So they're going to have to spend. And that situation with Golden Boy, where there was a co-promotional deal, didn't work out. He never fought in the United States, as was planned, and the pandemic obviously sort of played into that. It's a real shame, because that looked like an opportunity, that he could be the number one heavyweight in their stable and build his profile and uh, perform to a much bigger and better, or not better audience, but bigger audience in the United States to broaden his profile, to give him better exposure. So it sort of seems to be the case of Arslan Bekmakhmadov. Where is he going? What's he going to do? Is he going to become a bit of a wasted talent? And I get it as well that, you know, some people question how far he can go in the division. But I like to watch this guy fight because he's a fun fighter. We know at a certain point, and there are other guys, other heavyweights you can think of, think of. Once they get to a certain point, they're not going to be able to steamroll through people. It will be tougher and harder. They will get hit and hit often. But they have the chance to, to hurt and stop guys because of the way that they fight and the power they carry. So I just hope that they can get this guy something meaningful because otherwise, well, what's the point? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.